Hello? It's 817, thus it's time for the 810 phone call, and we are checking in <laughs> with Jimmy Steinfeld in Los Angeles of JimmySteinfeld.com. And, Jimmy, I feel like uh, looking back on our Boy Scout days with Troop 375 and Hopkins, I actually should have awakened you with Reveille this morning like I did back in the day. Oh, that would have been so fun. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and, and Jimmy, of course, uh, you were an Eagle Scout back in the day, and, and what's the one merit badge you didn't get? Photography. So wow, was it how too did, hard? Isn't that weird? How did you miss out on the photography merit badge? I, You know, I wasn't into photography, really, um, except just a little tiny bit uh, when I was younger. But then uh, kind of around the time of college, I uh, got involved in photography and, and then went on to do music photography especially. And, of course, uh, Jimmy and I were, uh, you know, we're, we were classmates. We were also in the same uh, Boy Scout troop. And, Jimmy, you and I were often uh, sent on some pretty fun errands when we were tender feats. Remember that? Yes, uh, some rather embarrassing errands, I, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, they what, was, did you, what did they make you do? Well, we'd, uh, of course, get up uh, early in the morning uh, to make the uh, campfire so we would have uh, something to eat. We'd make breakfast. And the older scouts would say, uh, Jimmy, why don't you, uh, it's getting kind of smoky around here with the campfire. You better go and get us a smoke screen. And uh, you better go over to that patrol over there. So you'd go over to the, another patrol down the road, and they'd say, oh, we don't have a smoke screen. You uh, go way down the road to another troop and check with them. Of course, there's no such thing as a smoke screen, but you don't know that when you're a little kid. Yeah, yeah. And, and you and I both fell, fell for that, I think, more than once, didn't we? <laughs> Quite likely. Did you go snipe hunting then, too, or...? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did did you do you ever fall for the sky hook? Yes, that's right. And they would. I don't know how that, what excuse they gave us, but they'd say, "Go, go, get us a sky hook." <laughs> yeah, and and we dutifully go and do that, and and more than once probably with that too. Well, you guys would have been fun as tenderfeet when the upperclassmen. <laughs> Absolutely, were after you there. yeah, get yeah. the hook out of our mouth. There you and, go. And, well, Jimmy, you ended up, of course, uh, being uh, quite the successful rock and roll photographer in Los Angeles, and it actually started out uh, uh, kind of. You went to a Stevie Nicks concert. Is that sort of how the whole thing began for you? Uh, it, yes, pretty much. In fact, I talk about that in my book, Rock and Roll Lens. It's the first story in the book. Um, and what happened was I basically, uh, I had been doing photography for maybe a year or two just for fun, doing landscapes, and I took my camera to a Stevie Nicks concert, stood on a chair in about the 25th row, took some pictures uh, with a new film that Kodak had just come out with that allowed you to take pictures indoors with low light, and the pictures were great. I, I was shocked uh, that they turned out so great, and, and it was, of course, very exciting and fun, and that's really what hooked me on uh, doing music photography, and then I went on to do photos for uh, Rolling Stone and Spin Magazines and, uh, and newspapers and so forth. Well, yeah, and the whole Spin Magazine thing was kind of a big deal. That sort of got you onto the national scene, didn't it? That's correct. The very first picture that I ever did uh, in a national magazine was for Spin, and that was back in, I believe, 85. Uh, that was a picture of George Thorogood. And, um, and it gave me kind of the, uh, the courage to call Rolling Stone and tell them I had been published and uh, could I do something for them. And they said, well, just send us your portfolio. And at that time, uh, all I had were a few, a few photos. I said, I don't even have a portfolio. <laughs> Here's they my said, family. <laughs> yeah, they said, send a few 8 by 10s and I did. And they uh, liked them so much that they ran them in the next issue, and that really helped me a great deal. So you start off with a Minolta film camera. And, of course, a lot of people listening to the audience younger probably don't even know what film is. But uh, at what point did you know that uh, film was not going to be the medium you use anymore and that you had to go digital? Is that just recently? Uh, yeah, that was probably I started shooting digitally uh, probably 10 to 15 years ago, which actually was a little late to the party. Um, I was so used to shooting film, and I still shoot film. But uh, there has to be a really good budget to shoot film because yeah. it's an you know, <laughs> expensive process. But um, uh, I'm shooting uh, probably most of the stuff now uh, digitally, and digital's come so far. It looks uh, so terrific now. I just did the new uh, album cover for uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. I shot both the front and back cover, and that's probably the most recent uh, thing that's come out. That was exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, you mentioned the Minolta. It's sitting on my desk. I'm looking at it. As we're speaking, my very first camera. Wow, that's Not that amazing. I use it much anymore. See, mine was one of those little uh, flat Kodak things. What were they called again? I remember those. Instamatics, right? Yeah, and they were flat. They had those flat ones. Well, you know what I found the other day? The kids were looking at that they didn't know what it was. Was a flash cube. I found oh, yeah. this old box. And they're like, <laughs> "What's that?" I said, "We well, actually put it on the camera, and you 
took flash pictures. You got four shots, and that was it. And they were, like, amazed yeah. by that. So did you have your own dark room then back in the day with film? Uh, I did in the early days when I was doing uh, black and white photography. Um, of course, some people have uh, color labs in their uh, studios or their own homes, but color's really uh, complicated to, uh, to process and to print. But I did uh, quite a bit of black and white, and um, it, was very, it was fun. It was exciting. And what, I, you, you, I know you like to get things signed, too, Jimmy. And uh, one of my favorite stories of you uh, trying to get something signed, and well, you actually were successful, was uh, Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith. That's right. You, um, you want me to tell that story? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. And it's in my book. And by the way, in my book, what I did was I wrote a story on the left-hand side of the page when you open the book, and on the right-hand side is the picture that relates to the story. And this picture is a picture of Steven Tyler in midair, uh, underneath the Aerosmith sign on a tour from 1994, Joe Perry's in the picture, too. So um, basically, here's the story. I first photographed Aerosmith at Harriet Island on the Mississippi River. Before the show began, I had managed to get autographs on the album cover I had brought of everyone in the band except Steven Tyler. After the show, I asked Steven to sign it. But while he was signing it, he became distracted by something, and the next thing I knew... He was signing it over to some other guy. <laughs> and I had gotten everybody else in the band already to sign it. So I, I yelled, Stephen! And, uh, and when he realized what he was doing, he ripped my album in half, sort of along the, <laughs> the margins, wow. and gave me the half with all the autographs. And then he signed the other half to this other guy that he had <laughs> kind of started there with. Anyway... <laughs> That's... I was really pissed at the time, but now it makes a great story. you got to have that frame, don't you? Yes, I do. That's excellent. Well, and, and what, what's, uh, what's the one autograph you didn't get then? There must be a story about that, right? Um, yeah, let me think about th Well, I'll tell you the story that I think about of that, that, that didn't happen. I got to photograph uh, the Rat Pack. Um, oh, yeah. They did a reunion in the early 90s. And, but one day before the concert, Dean Martin uh, got sick and canceled out of the tour. Well, I got to photograph Frank and Sammy, but I never got to see or photograph the great Dean Martin. Yeah, he was, he was a lot of fun to watch. He had that great TV show, too. He did. Yeah. And, Jimmy, of course, yeah, you've got the book. It's available, uh, Rock and Roll Lens, at uh, your website, jimmysteinfeld.com. And uh, part of the proceeds of that book go to Make-A-Wish. That's correct. I've become very involved in the Make-A-Wish Foundation over the last uh, 10 or more years. Um, I do a great deal of photography for them uh, here in the uh, Los Angeles area, and I do donate uh, a portion of the proceeds of my book to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah, and it's a beautiful book. Uh, check it out at jimmysteinfeld.com. Also, uh, I would imagine amazon.com would have it as well. And uh, Jimmy, of course, uh, for those photographers everywhere, I know you have one piece of advice for them. That's right. As for your camera, don't leave home without it. There you go. It's hard to now. That's right on my phone. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. That's, that's exactly right. And I do some pictures now with the, with the cell phone. Yeah, it's amazing. Have you actually technology. had any pictures published that you just used a cell phone? Uh, I, not that I can really think of, but one thing I have done lately, I've uh, moved over into music video. And uh, I just put out a music video and Son of a Gun last month. Uh, the video won uh, Best Video of 2014 at the New Media Film Festival. Nice. Wow. Excellent. That's excellent. That was exciting. All right. Hey, Jimmy, it's been a lot of fun talking with you, and uh, keep us posted. We know you've got, you're working on a new book. We'd love to hear about it when you have that out, too. Phil and all my friends at K-Fire, I really appreciate it. It's been great fun. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Bye-bye. And again, Jimmy Steinfeld. That's JimmySteinfeld.com.